Hey, Spencer here with Jesus Christ and His Second Coming. Got a question for you. Do you know what the plan of redemption is? You ever heard of it? What about the plan of salvation? Are those two plans the same or are they different? Stay tuned in this episode to find out about these plans. Hello, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to Jesus Christ and His Second Coming. I'm your host, Spencer. And on this channel, we spend time learning more about Jesus Christ and what we should know in preparation for his second coming. Now, it's been a little while, but I'm glad to be back. Since I've been gone for a little over two months, I've been working on a few things meant to expand and enhance your learning experiences related to the topic of Jesus Christ and his second coming. One of those enhancements is the creation of a blog site where you can read the transcript from the previous episodes. At the time of this recording, I do not have all of the episodes up, but we will be working on getting them added over the next few weeks. Additionally, these blog posts can contain screenshots and slides from the episode in case you want to see that information again. I'm also considering creating and sending out an email-based newsletter. If that's something you'd be interested in receiving, there's a link in the description of this video to an online form where you can submit your name and email. You can rest assured that while I will not share or sell this information in a third-party group, it will stay exclusively with me and only be used to share the newsletter or any critical updates for this channel. One other future looking idea I wanted to share with you is the idea I've had about doing some live episodes where I'll be broadcasting from some sites that are important to second coming events. Now, I live in the Kansas City metro area and I'm within driving distance of Independence, Missouri, which is the future location of the New Jerusalem. I'm also within driving distance of far west Missouri and Adam on Diamond. The idea is to go to these locations and do a live broadcast where I will show these sites and talk about them while I'm there. This idea actually came to me a few weeks back when I had the rare opportunity of getting a guided tour of Adam and Diamond by a senior missionary couple who are currently serving at Adam and Diamond. During the tour, we talked about common myths. They hear explanations about some of the areas, and they showed me some sites that are off the beaten path. These live events would be unique to our channel as I'm one of the only YouTubers who live so close to these locations. So if you love this idea and you'd like to see me present live, then here's what I need you to do. First, I need you to like and comment on this video. Second, I need you to share this video with your friends, family, and fellow Christians and ask them to also like and comment. If we can get at least 100 likes on this video, which shouldn't be too difficult to do, then I'll schedule these different live events. I'm curious to see how you and your network respond to this idea. Now, for today's episode, I've been spending time mulling around what I should talk about, especially since I haven't posted in a while. As I've pondered and even directly asked the Lord what I should talk about next, I received the prompting to talk about the plan. I'll admit that when I first had the thought come to my mind to talk about, quote, the plan, I wasn't sure what exactly that meant. And part of the reason for the confusion or even the hesitation stems from the fact that when I first started to think about the plan in context of Christianity and what I understand of the plan, I realized that throughout my life as a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, I've heard different names used in reference to the plan. In fact, one of the first things that I noticed was that when I went into our gospel library and started to search the plan, I started seeing both the plan of salvation and the plan of redemption show up in my search results. And I started to think about it for a minute and realized that I've heard both of these terms used quite often throughout different talks, both at the local level and even in general conference, along with reading the scriptures and in Sunday school lessons. This got me thinking and wondering, well, are we simply using these two terms interchangeably, or is there actually a difference between the plan of salvation and the plan of redemption? And then I started to think about that, and then I realized that I've also heard of a third plan that's referenced a lot in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and that's the Great Plan of Happiness. So now that I've realized that there are three different plans that are often referenced throughout different settings, this is actually the idea of what I want to look at and talk about with you today. Because after doing some research and even leveraging some artificial intelligence, I began to learn that there's actually a difference between the three plans. Now, one of these plans actually encompasses the two other plans, and so I'm going to touch on that a little bit, but I actually want to save that for its own separate episode because it's a lot more in-depth and there's a lot more information to go over. So what is the difference between redemption versus salvation? 
I want to start by looking at and even asking you to drop down into the comments below and share with me what you know and understand or what you even think about when you hear the term plan of salvation versus plan of redemption. What do you think is the difference between these two plans? Is there a difference between these two plans or are they synonyms for each other? Are they the same plan that we simply use interchangeably to mean the same thing? Now, if you're not a member of the LDS Church because you belong to another sect of Christianity, I'd be curious to hear from you in the comments below. Do you use these terms in your own teachings and gospel study? Have you heard of these two plans? And if so, what do you know about them? How are they talked about in context of your own religious study and learning? To take a look at these two plans, let's first take a look at the difference between them. One plan talks about salvation, and the other plan talks about redemption. Now, these obviously have some similarities and overlap, but there's also a little difference between them, hence why we have two different words to talk about these plans. The first plan I actually want to look at is the plan of redemption, and it'll make sense here in a minute why I want to talk about redemption before salvation, because as we'll see, that redemption has a bit of an impact on salvation. So what is the plan of redemption? What does it mean to be redeemed? And why do we need to be redeemed? For this, I want to change over to the citation index. And let's see here, pull that up. There we go. Now, when we search the term or the word redemption, we get a handful of scriptures that show up. And if you look, you'll notice the first three scriptures are in the book of Leviticus. All three are spread throughout chapter 25. It's important to understand that the book of Leviticus is where we get the Levitical law for the Israelites. When we look at these verses in chapter 25, you'll notice the idea of redemption deals with being paid back or having something being restored to you. In verse 24, it talks about redemption. In verse 24, it talks about a redemption for land. In verse 51, it talks about redemption for money. In verse 52, it talks about a price for redemption. The question now becomes, what exactly is being bought back as part of the plan of redemption? What needs to be returned to us? To understand what we've lost, we have to go back to the beginning of man's existence on this earth. We have to go back to our first mortal parents, Adam and Eve. We learn in 2 Nephi chapter 2, starting in verse 15, about what happened with Adam and Eve. This account provides some additional insights to what we read about in Genesis. So those who only operate out of the Bible, you can learn some of this through the book of Genesis. But for those who are members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, we're going to go ahead and read out of 2 Nephi chapter 2. So starting again in verse 15, it reads, And to bring about his eternal purposes, meaning the Savior, in the end of man, after he had created our first parents, and the beasts of the field, and the fowls of the air, and in fine all things which are created, it must needs be that there was an opposition, even the forbidden fruit in opposition to the tree of life, the one being sweet and the other bitter. Wherefore, the Lord God gave unto man that he should act for himself. Wherefore, man could not act for himself, save it should be that he was enticed by one or the other. And I, Lehi, according to the things which I have read, must needs suppose that an angel of God, according to that which is written, had fallen from heaven, wherefore he became a devil, having sought that which was evil before God. And because he had fallen from heaven and had become miserable forever, he sought also the misery of all mankind. Wherefore he said unto Eve, Yea, even that old serpent, who is the devil, who is the father of all lies? Wherefore he said, Partake of the forbidden fruit, and you shall not die you shall be as God, knowing good and evil. And after Adam and Eve had partaken of the forbidden fruit, they were driven out of the Garden of Eden to till the earth. And they have brought forth children, yea, even the family of all the earth. And the days of the children of men were prolonged according to the will of God, that they might repent while in the flesh. Wherefore their state became a state of probation, and their time was lengthened, according to the commandments of the Lord God given unto the children of men. For he gave commandment that all men must repent, for he showed unto all men that they were lost, 
because of the transgression of their parents. And this is what leads into for the plan of redemption. All men were lost because of the transgression of their parents, meaning Adam and Eve. And now behold, if Adam had not transgressed, he would not have fallen, but he would have remained in the Garden of Eden. And all things which were created must have remained in the same state in which they were after they were created. And they must have remained forever and had no end. And they would have had no children, wherefore they would have remained in a state of innocence, having no joy, for they knew no misery, doing no good, for they knew no sin. But behold, all things have been done in the wisdom of him who knoweth all things. Adam fell that men might be. And men are that they might have joy. And the Messiah cometh in the fullness of time, that he may redeem the children of men from the fall. So the plan of redemption is tied to redeeming us from the fall. This is where we start to identify those slight distinguishable differences between the plan of redemption and the plan of salvation. And because that they are redeemed from the fall, they have become free forever, knowing good from evil, to act for themselves and to not be acted upon, save it to be by the punishment of the law at the great and last day, according to the commandments which God hath given them. Wherefore, men are free according to the flesh, and all things are given them which are expedient unto man. And they are free to choose liberty and eternal life through the great mediator of all men, or to choose captivity and death according to the captivity and power of the devil, for he seeketh that all men might be miserable like unto himself. So the plan of redemption is what redeems us from the fall of Adam and Eve. It's important to understand this concept because when we think about the plan of redemption, The plan of redemption applies to the whole earth. This starts to help illustrate the slight difference between the plan of redemption and the plan of salvation. Uh, Let's look at it this way. The plan of redemption redeems the entire world, meaning all mankind, past, present, and future. Without this redemption or plan of redemption, the human race remains alienated from our heavenly father. In many ways, the doors, or in this picture, the gate, to heaven is closed. We can't get back in. And we see this going back to the story of Adam and Eve being cast out of the Garden of Eden. They were cast out with no way to get back home. The plan of redemption, though, through our Savior, opened that gate and created that ability for us to get back to our Heavenly Father. So now let's talk about salvation. The plan of salvation is part of the plan of redemption. In fact, they work in tandem with each other. While the plan of redemption is what opened the door or that gate to return back to our heavenly parents, it's the plan of salvation that enables us to walk through those doors. The plan of salvation is the personal part of the plan. In fact, we learn from Paul in Philippians 2.12 that we must, quote, work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. End quote. We also learn in Mosiah chapter 3, verse 17, that, quote, And moreover, I say unto you, that there shall be no other name given, nor any other way, nor means whereby salvation can come unto the children of men, only in and through the name of Christ, the Lord Omnipotent. I want to go to a talk that will hopefully help us illustrate this idea a little better, if it hasn't already become clear. This talk is on the topic of the plan of redemption, and I'm only going to read an extract of this uh, general conference talk. It was given by Elder D. Todd Christofferson in April of 2013. Now, the title of the talk is actually aptly named. It's named Redemption, Um, and I'm only going to share a portion of this talk, but I'll provide a link to the full talk in the description if anybody wants to go ahead and read it. Elder Christofferson says, quote, Among the most significant of Jesus Christ's descriptive titles is Redeemer. The word redeem means to pay off an obligation or a debt. Redeem can also mean to rescue or set free as by paying a ransom. 
If someone commits a mistake and then corrects it or makes amends, we say he has redeemed himself. Each of these meanings suggests different facets of the great redemption accomplished by Jesus Christ through his atonement, which includes, in the words of the dictionary, quote, to deliver from sin and its penalties, as by a sacrifice made for the sinner. The Savior's redemption has two parts. First, it atones for Adam's transgression and the consequent fall of man by overcoming what could be called the direct effects of the fall, physical death and spiritual death. Physical death is well understood. Spiritual death is the separation of man from God. In the words of Paul, quote, For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. And that's found in 1 Corinthians 15.22. This redemption from physical and spiritual death is both universal and without condition. I want to pause here real quickly because I know that just a minute ago I commented how the plan of redemption saves us from the fall. Elder Christofferson provides clarification that what that means or what that looks like is that it is rescued from physical death and spiritual death. Okay, And the nice thing is, is everyone who's lived everyone who is living, everyone who is yet to live, get to take advantage of this plan of redemption without condition. You don't have to live a life a certain way. You don't have to be in a certain part of the world. You don't have to be from a different relig- or from a specific religion. You don't have to have hair of a certain color or eyes of a certain color or skin of a certain color. You don't even have to know or even accept Jesus Christ as who he truly is, to get this benefit, to be able to enjoy and reap the rewards of this plan. That's, that's uh, you know, an example of just how full of mercy and grace Christ is. You don't even have to know who he is to benefit from this. Now, going back to Elder Christofferson's uh, talk, He says, continuing, quote, the second aspect of the Savior's atonement is redemption from what might be termed the indirect consequences of the fall, our own sins as opposed to Adam's transgression. By virtue of the fall, we were born into a mortal world where sin, that is, disobedience to divinely instituted law, is pervasive. Speaking of all of us, the Lord says, even so, when they begin to grow up, sin can see conceiveth in their hearts, and they taste the bitter that they may know to prize the good. And it is given unto them to know good from evil, wherefore they are agents unto themselves. And he's quoting out of Moses chapter 6, verses 55 and 56. Elder Christofferson goes on to say, Because we are accountable and we make choice, make the choices, the redemption from our own sins is conditional. Condition on confessing and abandoning sin and turning to a godly life, or in other words, conditioned on repentance. Wherefore, commands the Lord, teach it unto your children, that all men everywhere must repent, or they can in no wise inherit the kingdom of God, for no unclean thing can dwell there or dwell in his presence. So again, going back to the analogy of the gate, the redemption The plan of redemption opened that gate. The plan of salvation is what enables us to repent and to then inherit the kingdom of God, to be clean enough to dwell in his presence. Elder Christofferson continues, The Savior's suffering at Gethsemane and his agony on the cross redeem us from sin by satisfying the demands that justice has upon us. He extends mercy and pardons those who repent. The atonement also satisfies the debt justice owes to us by healing and compensating us for any suffering we innocently endure. For behold, he suffereth the pains of all men, yea, the pains of every living creature, both men, women, and children, who belong to the family of Adam. End quote. You can find that scripture reference in 2 Nephi chapter 9, verse 21. And for comparison, also check out Alma 7, verses 11 and 12. Recapping on what we've just learned from this excerpt of the talk given by Elder Christofferson and thinking back on the words we read earlier in the scriptures, it starts to help us understand that the plan of redemption and the plan of salvation in a lot of ways are one of the same. 
they go hand in hand. You don't necessarily have one without the other. It's important to understand that all mankind will experience the benefits of being resurrected as a result of the atonement of Jesus Christ. As such, all men then are redeemed and have the opportunity to work out their own salvation individually to be prepared to return home to their heavenly parents. So while we'll continue to hear people in church and in talks use the terms redemption and salvation interchangeably, it's important to distinguish and understand that there is a slight difference between the two, but the two plans go hand in hand. Both plans are carried out and could have only been carried out by one person, and that is our Savior Jesus Christ. Without our Savior, we would never have been redeemed and had a way back to our heavenly parents. Without our Savior, we could never repay or meet the demands of justice would that qualify us to then dwell with our earthly with our heavenly parents. That's why I think I want to just reiterate this concept one more time. Redemption's what opened the gate to go back home, while salvation is what allows us to individually walk through those gates and to be ready to be with our heavenly parents. With that in mind, I want to tease the following uh, the follow-up episode to this topic, and that is this other plan that I referenced earlier, the great plan of happiness. You see, the plan of redemption and the plan of salvation, they fit into the great plan of happiness. What's wonderful and what makes it a great the great plan of happiness is that it allows us the opportunity to take the plan of redemption and salvation one step further to a point of exaltation. I understand that the notion or idea of exaltation may be foreign to some of you, which is why I want to talk about it in a future episode. This notion or idea of exaltation is a little unique, if you will, to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And that is something that is is taught to its members. But what's beautiful is that it has been taught for a long time in the scriptures. It's just something that we have to read through and have a better understanding of exactly what the Lord means by his words. And this is where modern revelation, modern day prophets, play an important role to help us understand the future. So with all that said, I want to say thank you again for tuning into this episode. I hope you really enjoyed it. Please make sure you comment down in the section below, comment section below with your thoughts, feelings, and opinions about what we talked about in this episode. Also, make sure to like and comment below about having me doing live broadcasts from some sites here in the greater Kansas City area. Make sure that you invite your friends and families and others to like and comment on this video so we can get up to the 100 likes, which is what we need in order to then make it worthwhile to go out to these locations and to talk about them in greater detail. As always, also note, we have an email that if you would like to send communication in longer form than what the comments section would support, feel free to drop us an email and check out our blog and subscribe to that so you can be able to see the transcript from this episode and other episodes. Lastly, if you'd like to join our newsletter, there's a link below where you can subscribe to the newsletter. And if you're someone who likes to use Instagram, one thing that we try to do is create Instagram posts that tie to our episodes. And they can help be a good, ins- uh, good inspirational quotes that show up in your feed. Well, thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.